There we go. Hi. This is the Camera News Podcast for August the 15th. All right, so what's in the news this week? Um, a lot of stuff about cinema cameras. That's what's dominating the rumors. And APS-C versus full frame. There was a really good article that I read. I'm going to put the link in the description down below so you can go and read it yourself. So let's start. In a recent interview reported on Digital Camera World, a senior Canon executive was asked about the possibility of a digital or retro styled camera being developed and that executive said there was a possibility and that he would like to see the AE-1 return in a digital form. So Canon may have uh, a retro camera in the works too. Uh, it seems to have been a big splashy success for Nikon so Canon I think might be wanting to roll one out themselves. That's pretty good news. That's pretty good news. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, this isn't new uh, because I found an article um, that was uh, published at the end of May. But, going back to the cinema camera theme, Black Magic Design has announced the launch of a camera app for Android. They already have one in iOS for Apple. Uh, an iPad, iPhone and iPad, but, uh, but now they've got one for Android. Uh, the app gives advanced camera features um, for the camera on your phone, of course. For those who are not familiar with Blackmagic, they, along with Red Cinema, are the top two makers of cinema cameras. And Canon and Sony also make cinema cameras. Cinema cameras. Not cinnamon, but cin cinema. <laughs> wow, I'm getting hungry. Maybe that's time for dinner. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I'm happy to see that app makers are developing apps for Android devices, uh, especially since there are more Android devices around on the planet than there are iPhones. So that's a good thing. Uh, I'm glad to see that they're not ignoring uh, Android devices. See what else? Sebastian, you okay? Did y'all hear that? He was <laughs> making a noise. Anyway, Fujifilm has announced uh, an Instax Mini EVO limited edition for their 90th anniversary. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and I saw a rumor uh, about a Sony FX50 cinema camera, which may hold uh, advanced features in a compact body. So that's also pretty cool. Cinema cameras are usually kind of, they're kind of big and kind of bulky. So it's kind of cool that they would put one in a compact kind of body, but still have cinema features in it. That's pretty cool. All right, so now about that article that I'm going to link to down below. Um, I see a lot of discussion and questions about APS-C versus full frame uh, cameras. <clears throat> and many times, <coughs> Excuse me. There's a little confusion about the difference between APS-C and full frame. Uh, APS-C uh, and full frame, of course, are the two most popular uh, styles of camera, but they aren't the only types. Uh, there's also uh, micro four thirds, but for the sake of this article, they were just talking about uh, APS-C and full frame. Um, the article was on technology experts and it's, um, they do, I, th I think they do a really good job of explaining it without getting too technical. Uh, so it's easy to understand, even for me. So that was good. Um, I, for one, do not really get into the whole technical side of photography and, you know, I mean, I pretty much just set all my stuff on auto and, and I mean, I don't even use a viewfinder on the camera. I use the LCD screen that's on the back. That's what I use to frame my photos and look and see what I'm doing. So, you know, I'm very much not a traditional photographer in that sense. So I'm glad it's not too technical in the article. So if you're looking for a camera and you want to know the difference between APS-C and full frame because you can't, you know, you're not sure which one to buy or whatever, 
uh, then I think it was worth giving this article a very good read because it's a very good article and explains the difference because a lot of times people say APS-C is a crop sensor. Uh, it's it's not. Um, that that's the, the language is not right there. Um, APS-C has a use as, as a smaller sensor than full frame, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it has less pixels um, or any of that. It's usually APS APS-C cameras and lenses are usually lighter weight. Uh, and so therefore they're less expensive. So they're kind of marketed as an entry level uh, to getting like a regular camera, but uh, that is not necessarily mean that it's like a beginner status because with a smaller sensor, um, they're very good for uh, video. In fact, I bought two APS-C cameras. Uh, they're both Nikons, they're the F uh, ZFC, I bought two of those strictly for video because they can film in 4K video uh, just like any other camera. So, you know, it, it the article covers this and it all basically depends on what you want to use your camera to do. Do you want to shoot video? Do you want to shoot stills? Are you concerned about getting a lot of detail? Or, you know, are you wanting to do something more artistic? So, Read the article and check it out. It's really good. So anyway, y'all have a great week, and I'll talk to you next week.